So my name is John D. McHugh. Um, I'm a photographer and I have been for longer than I want to say out loud. Um, but I've been invited here as the founder and creator of a little app called Marksta, which very simply allows users to watermark photos on iPhones and on iPads. The app I'm going to talk about a little bit, but really it's come out of my experience and, and my growing frustration as a, as a working photographer. Um, and to give you some background, uh, lots of former employers in this room, I was a stringer for AP, uh, I was a staff photographer at Agence France Press, I'm freelance now again, and um, I am represented by Reportage at, uh, at Getty Images. And in all those years, I have dutifully filled out my IPTC fields. I've done that because, obviously, I want to get my pictures on the front page of the newspapers. Um, I've done it with an eye on history because I know that it's important these photographs will be historical documents one day. Um, but mostly I've done it because I'm afraid of the pictures, the editors and the desk editors who ring up and scream at photographers. As a photographer, I tell stories with images. It's a very simple concept. <laughs> um, I make a lot of personal sacrifices to do it. It's hard work, but it's something that I, I absolutely believe in. But it is hard work. Um, in a few weeks, I go to Afghanistan again. Um, it'll be my eighth year working in Afghanistan, and I've spent months on the battlefield, months cover at a time. I don't mean a few months in eight years. I mean I go out for months at a time. Um, I've fallen off a mountain in Tora Bora and busted up my leg and dislocated my knee in a snowstorm so I couldn't even be medevaced. I have been involved in countless gunfights and had rockets fired at me and, and, and basically everything that, that you imagine happens in Afghanistan. And, and I've been shot out there. So the point I'm trying to make here is I have made a considerable emotional investment in my photography as well as a financial one as a freelancer. Like many photographers, I'm dyslexic. Um, so for me, the thing that I love most about photography is that it transcends language. So somebody writes a story, it has to be translated and disseminated many different ways um, for the user, the end user, to understand it. But for photography, whether it's a, a standalone picture or a photo essay, most people will be able to understand it when it gets there or to them. And if it, well, if they can't, I haven't done my job very well. So I've watched the growth of social media with great excitement. Photographs that I used to take for, for The Guardian um, or for The Irish Times uh, you know, can now be disseminated all over the world. Um, many more people see it than read those newspapers or those magazines. Um, and in fact, you know, the, the reach gets to some of the very remote places that I find myself working on a regular basis. Um, but as we all know, this explosion in, in uh, uh, phot photography dissemination hasn't uh, resulted in greater revenues, but particularly for the photographers, I can tell you that. Um, my, my photographs appear widely on the internet, and it's great. Um, but most of the places it appears, uh, people haven't got my permission, people certainly are not paying me, and most of the time, most frustrating of all, the photographs are not even attributed to me, so I don't even get that acknowledgement. Coming here today, I was, it was hard to figure out how to, how to pitch this because you know most of this. You know, we all know that the internet has changed the face of journalism. We all know that photography is right-click, save, stolen, however you want to describe it. Um, I know the correct term is copyright infringement, but I will call it stealing because when somebody takes my photographs and they don't pay me for it, it affects my ability to pay my mortgage, it affects my ability to feed my two little girls, and it affects my ability to fund the work that I do in the future. And I don't think enough people understand this, and I think it's a message that we need to hammer home to people, just as the movie industry and the music industry has hammered their message to people that piracy is a crime and undermines the production of, uh, of, of our work. In the past, it was IPTC that offered me some protection. It acted as my publicist, it acted as, as marketing department, and it helped me to get paid. Um, there are even some news organizations that automatically pay you based on your IPTC, although not enough. But online, there's very, very little regard for IPTC. Um, 
following on from your slideshow, uh, many of the big social uh, media platforms routinely strip out uh, metadata and IPTC, Facebook and Twitter being the biggest offenders and the ones that reach the most audience and, and do the most damage to, to photographers. So now, the photographs that I have worked really hard to produce are being copied, shared, stolen, left, right and center. Um, and as a photographer, it drives me crazy. And it seems to be almost the only subject of conversation amongst photographers at this stage. You know, is the evil of being on the internet, does it outweigh any benefits that, that, we, um, that we get? And the reality is we can't opt out. We have to have uh, a website or some sort of online portfolio if we are to continue to get work. You know, if we're, if we're to continue to, to engage with our, um, our customers and our audience, we have to be active on social media. Um, but we know that as soon as we put an image online, it can and probably will be stolen. So eventually, I came to the conclusion that there's no way to fight this and I'm going to stop trying. Instead, I'm going to go back to what artists and painters um, and creators have done since the dawn of time. I'm going to write my name on my photographs. Now, I know that watermarked images are not particularly uh, popular um, with the newspapers and magazines, and I have never been. Um, but, you know, I'm not particularly keen on losing my entire career either, my ability to earn. I'm not talking about crude, ugly watermarks that have been splashed across the, the centre of a photograph. Um, this hasn't come up very well on the screen, but you know, it's, it's possible to put a small watermark, you know, your name, copyright, um, or your, I mean, I'm lucky I've got a, a reasonably unusual name, so if just my name is there, you know, somebody Googles, they can find me. Um, but maybe when you put your company name or your Twitter name, um, photographer may want to hashtag the pictures. Um, but the idea is that if a picture editor, newspaper, magazine, a TV station wants to use a, a, a picture, the watermark shouldn't be a problem for them because it's giving them the ability to find me and then negotiate permission and a, and a fee. There are also very real concerns that social media platforms intend to exploit our photographs um, without any uh, remuneration or any consideration of how the photographer feels about it. You know, Instagram uh, got particularly embroiled with um, in controversy with the, the terms and conditions that they uh, changed just before Christmas, um, which was particularly good for Markster, but not good for Instagram. Um, and, and people are right to be protective of their photographs, particularly online, because it's so easy for them to get out of, out of control, um, or beyond your control. And so the idea with Markster is it creates a very simple, very, very simple little process for people to just mark their photographs before it goes online. And, you know, Say, for example, if you're a photographer in Haiti and you quickly ran out to cover disaster and you also put some pictures on Twitter, then it would avoid any unfortunate incident if um, major news organizations decided to take those photographs and use them. In the old days, IPTC used to do this, but IPTC is being routinely stripped out. And so I'm not saying watermarking photographs is, is a great thing to do. You know, I don't want to write all over my photographs. I'm saying it's the least worst thing that I can come up with right now. Probably shouldn't say that as a owner of my company, but that's that is that that's how I feel about it. Of course, many of you will wonder why the heck has this guy created an app to do watermarking when it's so easy to do on Photoshop or Aperture or anything else? I mean, we, we probably can all do it. I can do it with my eyes closed. Um, but I shoot a lot on my iPhone these days. Yes, in Afghanistan and in other difficult places, I was shooting my iPhone. And lots of other photographers are shooting on their iPhones. And not just professionals, lots of amateurs are shooting on their iPhones. Um, last year, this, by this time last year, Facebook said that 3,000 pictures were being uploaded every second. And that was a year ago. And that was just Facebook. And an awful lot of those are being shot on an iPhone or other smart device. Um, but, but my iPhone. <laughs> so even though with Photoshop I can, I can watermark my, my pictures, basically I don't want to wait. I, if I can shoot the picture on my iPhone, if I can you know, tone it, if I can color correct and, and contrast correct my photos on my phone, if I can upload to Facebook or Twitter to, to engage with my audience and also to let you know, picture editors know where I am and what I'm doing, the only piece of the puzzle that's missing is protecting my pictures. 
So once I figured that out, I was like, well, this is easy. I'm going to make an app that allows me to watermark my pictures before they go online. So today, I was hoping to make a big announcement. I thought I might do a Steve Jobs and dramatically launch the next version of uh, Markstar, version 2, on my phone. But uh, Apple have scuppered that by not actually approving the release yet. <laughs> but <laughs> the new version of Markstra is with Apple right now. And actually, my phone's been beeping all the way through this, so it may have been approved while, we, while, while I'm talking. But the first stage of Markstra was watermark your pictures. Put your name, put your company name, put your website, put whatever you want on it. But just mark it and make sure that it's identified as yours. The second part is to put IPTC in the background. So now I'm giving photographers the ability to fill out their IPTC on their iPhone or on their iPad before they upload it. And the idea here is very simple. You know, you can, you can have a, a template you, that you've written before and you can load it in if you don't have time. You know, if you're on a big job, the agencies will usually have a prepared caption template and they will send it out to their photographers. And yes, you will do a lot of work on your Mac or your PC, but if you're shooting off quick pictures on your phone, you can have the same template in there. So now, I know it takes time to put IPTC in, but it's a few seconds. Um, there's also an idea here, this song, there's also an idea that um, there, are, there are a lot of users out there who have no idea what IPTC is. You know, the soccer moms who are really driving the sales of Markster because they're concerned about their photographs going on uh, Facebook or Pinterest or wherever else and being taken out of their control. Um, so they're watermarking their pictures. Um, but they, you know, and no, no disrespect to anyone, but, but they won't know much about IPTC. So what we've done is created one box where they put in their name once, and it's done, and then we will add that to the copyright notice in the picture. So at least if in the future somebody wants to use that photograph commercially, they can find who owns the picture. That's assuming that some social media platform haven't stripped out that information. So for me, the conversation here is great. It's been really interesting today. Um, and I know that <laughs> I know I'm supposed to try and end these things on, a, on, a, on an upbeat, but I'm not going to. For me, my concern is very real. It's the social media that's doing most damage to my ability to earn. So until I see representatives from Facebook and Twitter and other social media platforms sitting in this audience or engaging with IPTC, I don't see things improving very much. Thank you.